we're going to do a review and we're going to do it on the macro gold racer are you ready let's get going <laughs> G'day guys, Chris here from Vogus Prospecting. Today I'm going to run you over my new Macro Gold Racer uh, and we're going to find out exactly what it's capable of finding and at what depth running it through a detector garden that I've made up. Sit back and relax, hope you enjoy the video. The plan today is quite simple. I'm going to bury lead shot uh, and sinkers of varying sizes and shapes uh, at different depths and run the detector over it and it's gonna we're gonna record exactly what reading it gives us what noise it gives us uh, so I know what to do now these are our sizes that's the large type we have an irregular type we have a small medium we have a very very small if I can get it out of the container problem with using lead shot is they all roll around. <laughs> we have a very small and we have a medium. What we're going to do is set the gold racer up. Uh, this is just turned on. This is all factory settings. I haven't even ground balanced it yet. So we're in all metal mode. We're going to ground balance it. <laughs> Easy as that. We're going to leave sensitivity on factory 65 threshold we are going to reduce just a little bit just to get a nice consistent hum we're going to leave ISAT on factory 6 tracking we're going to put on to 1 because I want to see what it does uh, with an automatic threshold adjustment back to all metal and we're ready to go the first test we're going to run is a basic point blank air test with nothing on top uh, we're using the small one first on top of a brick no targets underneath it As you can see, it picks up the small target quite clearly with the threshold and even gives us an ID number, um, very, very sporadic, but ID number, it will even pinpoint. Next on the hit list is a large small. So this is the next size up from a shotgun pellet, we're going into an air gun pellet. Now at this stage you might be asking why am I using lead? Um, it's quite simple. Lead is in abundance and it also reacts very similar to how gold reacts on a detector. Uh, by using lead I will have a good idea of what it will be capable of finding in small amounts of gold. Uh, and the fact that I've already detected a lot of these pellets out of the ground uh, means that I know the machine is capable of detecting very very small targets. I just want to know how accurately it can do it. We now know the detector will pick up a very small target at point blank range. So we're going to move on to the underground tests. I've got my gardening bulb planting knife here and I'm going to plant from 1 to 3 inches. And for each individual target they're going to have a depth of 1 to 3. And we're going to see what the detector can and cannot pick up. So we're going to start with the smalls. The first test is 1 inch. Take out a small plug. Drop in our shotgun pellet and replace the plug. Now that we've added a little bit of depth to the soil, uh, the machine is finding it slightly harder to pick up. We no longer get any ID numbers, but we do get a tone break. I've retrieved the shotgun pallet out of that one inch hole. Now we're going to go down to two inches. Shotgun pallet going in. Dirt going back in on top. 
and we'll see how we go. Now, I was surprised. I thought we would have lost this target, but I tried different sections of the coil, uh, and I found that the front seems to be more sensitive. So, when I run the front over that uh, target, we're still getting a response, but only just, and it looks like ground noise. So it will still just barely pin. We have a small medium shot here. We're going down to one inch. In the hole. Cover it back up. With just a very, very, probably a double the amount of lead uh, from that shotgun pallet, we get a much clearer response from this machine. Easily pinpointable, very clear tone break. Back up, we're going to two inches. Still a nice clear response from this machine. Easily pinpointable. We're a little over three inches this time. Slow back in. Move the camera back slightly and the shovel. been a regular target this is a fired bullet however bits of gold will often come out of the ground looking very similar to this um, the irregular shape might make it more difficult for the detector to pick up uh, or it might make it more clear we'll find out we're going to bury this four inches deep This is very interesting. It also proves uh, that you should, when you're out in the field, try different angles because depending on how things are sitting is going to really affect how you get a response from your machine. If I go from this direction, I get a mild earth response from the target. If I change 90 degrees, however, that's a positive response from the machine. And I can pinpoint. So four inches down, irregular shape. Factory settings. And it's still finding it relatively easy. That's a quick rundown of what the Macro Gold Racer in its factory settings can do. Uh, we found some very small targets quite deep. I mean, a shotgun pellet at three inches just, only just, is quite impressive for a machine that costs less than $1,000. Uh, this machine runs at 56 kilohertz, so it's quite sensitive to those small targets that are quite shallow. So I was surprised that we were able to find one of them that deep. When you're talking about something the size of an air gun pellet at a couple of inches, and it pretty much makes a very, very definite noise, and it's able to pinpoint all the way down to three inches, um, yeah, that's fantastic. That, that means you're going to find gold that is quite small. If you're in the right area for it, you're going to find gold that, you know, you might find a 0 0.25, 0 0.2 gram uh, little picker uh, easily with this machine. But then again, discrimination mode. This is the interesting one. Um, I've used discrimination mode out coin shooting with this, and it works brilliantly. It is actually better than my uh, Racer 1 uh, at IDing what kind of coin it is. It's just that little bit more specific. Uh, so that's been fantastic, but for gold, that could be interesting. That's a whole different kettle of fish. When you're talking about having to use discrimination mode to get rid of um, high 
iron content in your ground or high mineralization and it, and it pretty well gets rid of your target ID, that's not great. That's not, that's not ideal. Now, I am not um, a very experienced gold detector, so I need a lot of practice with this machine to figure out exactly what is and what is not worth digging in discrimination mode. Having used it uh, over the last week in my area where there are hot rocks, I've been using it on all metal mode, and I have generally found, though, that hot rocks will scream below 10, uh, and they make a noise either side of the target. So if you have a target in the center, it'll pass over it, then make a noise on the left, then you'll pass back over it, and it'll make a noise on the right of it. It never pings on top of it. And there's a really good indication that it's been a hot rock. Um, they still pinpoint, they still make sometimes a really good noise, but they are quite obvious. So that means that you might not even necessarily need discrimination mode if you learn your machine well enough. Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope this video was a little bit of an insight for you. If you liked it, remember to hit that subscribe button down the bottom and give us a thumbs up. I hope to catch you out here sometime guys and see you later.